Formula Regional European Championship by Alpine cars fired their engines for the first time at the Hungara Ring circuit, which would play host to round six of the season. The first part of the season has seen four drivers share the top step of the podium, with Dino Beganovic having three wins, Paul Aron four wins, Gabrielli Mini two wins, and Hadrian David one. Well, not easy, not easy, honestly, uh, but we are improving a lot and uh, we are working hard. They are working hard, honestly. Uh, it's not easy. The level of the championship is um, really, really high. And, uh, but we are improving, so, and uh, we are confident for the future. And uh, we are quite happy for what we did. And um, I think, generally speaking, we did a, a good job. Yeah, I'm happy with it. The guys are starting to push. They're starting to come together. And uh, it's not easy to get a result in this place. So you still, but the fact that we're close means we've improved. Yeah, I think it is a good showing. The, the problem is the field is so competitive. Uh, it maybe doesn't look like that, but it, it is. And, and in fact, the, because it's competitive, this is what's going to make the drivers good. Kaz Habakur took his best result in the first qualifying set in a 1 minute 38.655 in Group A with the Van Amersfoort Racing driver narrowly beating Gabrielli Mini in a close battle by only a tenth and a half. The two of them swapped positions continuously during this session. However, it was Habakur who emerged on top in the end to take his first pole position in the series and a first for the Van Amersfoort team while the Italian driver would start third for race one. Paul Aron lined up on the front row ahead of David, who qualified fourth on the grid after struggling to match the Estonian in the second group. Row three consisted of Van Amersfoort Racing's Josh Dufek, who finished third in the first session, a result that earned him the top spot among the rookies, and Gabriel Bortoletto, who showed good pace in group B. Leonardo Fornaroli was seventh overall ahead of his teammates Roman Belinsky and Tim Tramnitz, while Nassov reflected his pace from testing to qualify inside the top ten for the first time. Yeah, it feels amazing, of course. Um, it's an amazing track to be here and also to put it on pole position is just an amazing feeling. Yeah, for sure, speed is really good. Uh, Josh is also uh, on P3 in the group and P5 starting in the race, so uh, we're just really up there, so it feels amazing. Well, of course, we did some, uh, some sim days. Uh, we just need, need a, a good preparation, of course. It's a new track for us. Um, so uh, we did a really good preparation to be uh, up here on the pole position. Yeah, obviously, it was, uh, again, a good qualifying. We were the first in our group. Sadly, we missed out on the overall pole, but honestly, I'm quite happy. I think we weren't as dominant as we were in Zandvoort and maybe a step back from the others, but we managed to put together a really clean qualifying. The car balance was good, so we managed to do it in the end. And also we were a bit on the back foot with the, with the uh, pit position. We were last in the pit, so we got one lap less than the others. Um, so I think overall we did a very good job. The green flag has flown here at the Hungara ring. To the left of screen is Paul Aron, and to the right, his first time on pole position is Kaz Habakur. We are go at the Hungara ring for race one, round six, and a bad, bad launch. You can see just how hurt Paul Aron was off there, off the right. So much wheel spin on the dirty side of the track, and in the white and black, ART Gabrielli Mini cruises through into second. Josh Josh Dufek's going to give this a go as well from row three. He goes round the outside and is Josh Dufek going to go into third place in the orange and black? That's Josh Dufek to the left of screen. In the white and red, Paul Aron tries to go all the way round the outside. Brief contact there and Aron is off. Aron is off, tries to recover now. He's tumbling down the top ten and a disaster start there for Paul Aron. A brilliant start for Cass Havercourt. He leads. Let's try and find the red and white of Paul Aron. He's dropped down to uh, Tim Tramnitz, so he's in around eighth place. It looks like one of the other Premiers going off, it seems. That's uh, Sebastian Montoya, who went off and rejoined the circuit, but it's Kaz Havakur who leads. Gabrielli Mini is second in the all-blue. Hadrian Davis got the run on Dupe as they come up towards turn number eight now. Are we going to see a change of third place? Oh, no, Hadrian David off there as well. Now going around the outside, I think that's Roman Belinsky in the Trident car, and Roman Belinsky is into third place. The Polish driver up into third place. He's taking his teammate with him as well in the 72, uh, in the red and white, going down the inside there of Josh Dupek. Leonardo Bornaroli has gone through into fourth place. 
What a hectic start here at the Hungara Ring. Hadji and David recovering. We've got to find out where Paul Aron uh, is as well. He's tumbling down the order, it seems, but we'll catch them as they come across the line. There you can see the top two are away and clear as we make our way down the start finish straight. There I can see Paul Aron. He's just in behind Tim Tramnitz. So it's Havercourt Mini, Belinsky, then Fornaroli, then Dufek. Ganovic is up to sixth place. Here comes Paul Aron, lunged down the inside of Tim Tram. This brilliant move from the Estonian there. Paul Aron, the recovery has started there, uh, but fighting back there is Tim Tram. This push to pass is now activated. They can use push to pass. As I said, they can use it five times throughout the race. Hadrian David in the all blue there comes next. He's running in ninth place. Gabriel Bortoletto is tenth. They're going to try and put the pressure on. Brilliant move there. Sebastian Montoya uh, defending, in fact, that might be from Sami Megatunif. And Sami Megatunif has gone through. Changed for 14th place. So that was Montoya defending and locking up as such. Good tactical driving there from Megatunif to force Montoya into mistake and that puts Megatunif up into 14th place. Oh no, that's the number 70 of Tim Tramnitz and that is three DNFs in a row. What a shame for Tim Tramnitz. Started in the top 10 and unfortunately he's going to go no further in this race until the third time in a row. Tim Tramnitz will not take the check and flag had an absolutely disastrous weekend. Has been inside the points as Paul Aaron on the push to pass system there goes down the inside of Beganovic, but he's not going to get the car stopped in time. And Beganovic helps himself back through to fifth place. All of this is allowing the blue car. You'll see to the right of screen, keep an eye there, you see it. Hadrian David is getting closer and closer. He'll be egging these two on to fight even more and more. The gap back to Hadrian David is just under a second. Speaking of gaps, the gap between our two leaders is up to 1.6 now. And this is the fight for sixth place. It's the fight between the two championship leaders as well. Had a look down the inside of Beganovic potentially there. We'll uh, see if there's uh, any moves. This is a little bit further back. This is the uh, number 55 RPM. Oh, side by side action there. Victor Bernier uh, being passed as they make their way down towards turn number one. Deli Gawanti running wide on the brakes uh, in the green and orange colours there. And Deli Gawanti rejoins, uh, having lost a place to Sebastian Montoya. That round the outside is Santiago Ramos there in the black and red. Is he going to be able to go all the way around the outside here? Santiago Ramos, yes. Brilliant driving there from Ramos. And he goes through to take a place. So a bad run of corners there for Deli Gawanti. He has dropped down to 20th place after all of that. Oh, no contact there between Sami Megatunif and Mary Boyer. Sadly, it's just not gone Mary Boyer's way today uh, at all. That's a change of 12th place. I'll tell you what, Sammy Megatunif on a charge started in 19th. Kaz Havakor, it's been a flawless performance and what a way to take your first win. Lights the flag. Kaz Havakor comes across the line to take the win in Formula Regional European Championship by Alpine at the Hungara Ring. His first win, Gabrielli Mini is second. And round the final corner, he's just going to hold on. Roman Belinsky out the final corner. He's going to take his first ever podium. For Trident, Roman Belinsky leads his teammate across the line, and Roman Belinsky will stand on the podium with Kaz Havercourt and Gabrielli Mini. What a performance from the Polish driver, Leonardo Fornaroli in fourth, Josh Dufek in fifth. It feels amazing, of course, to be here on the top uh, podium. Just feels amazing, and it's also my first of the season, so uh, on to many more. <laughs> no, of course, it was uh, quite a hard race, but anyway, I, I made the gap already from the beginning, and I just kept pushing yeah, yeah. to maintain that gap and just see how the gap was uh, was going. But yeah, I maintained it well, and I just uh, drove away quite well, so uh, yeah, I'm really happy. Uh, well, in the start, yeah, it was just a really good start. Uh, and I'm, after that, I was just tr trying to be really consistent, do my laps, just focus on myself. And uh, it worked, so uh, yeah, really happy. 
Well, to be honest, it was not a great start. Uh, there was a lot of wheel spin, but of course, uh, you don't need a perfect start. You need, just need to do better than the others. So that's what happened. Also, I tried to help a bit uh, Dufek for the championship, uh, let's say, um, to be in front of Aaron. Uh, that worked. Uh, there was a bit of, uh, say, a big fight be behind me in the first lap. So I put a bit of uh, a gap, and then uh, me and Cass started pulling a big gap from P3. Then he pulled a bit away from me, but yeah, that was a very calm race. Yeah, absolutely amazing, especially coming from P8 on the grid. It wasn't easy. Uh, the first lap, I made some really good moves, but no, I'm so thankful for the team. They gave me a great car, so yeah, I'm, I'm really happy. Yeah, I mean, Leo was so quick, so it wasn't easy. Um, but I mean, it's always good points for the team as well, for the team's championship. So this is really important. So yeah, it's good and I'm really happy with it. Adrian David would grab pole position for race two. The RS GP's French driver set the fastest time of a 1 minute 38.185 on his last lap in the Group B session, only 57 thousandths of a second ahead of his teammate, Gabriel Portoletto. ART Grand Prix's Gabriele Mini topped the Group A session, securing the front row for race two with a 1 minute 38.468. The Italian was just over a tenth faster than rookie Tramnitz, who was seeking redemption after he was forced to retire with a mechanical issue in race one while he was fighting inside the top ten. After leading his session, Aaron achieved the third row alongside Fornaroli. Deli Gawanti shared the fourth row of the grid with his teammate Tangavelu, who was competing for the first time for the team led by Keith Donegan. The top 10 is completed by Frenchman Maceo Capietto and Swiss driver Josh Dufa. To the left of screen in the white and black ART is Gabrielli Mini and to the right in the all blue is Hadrian David. We are underway here for race number two at the Hungara Ring and immediately Hadrian David pulling over to cross the challenges there of Gabrielli Mini who got a great start. Gabriel Portoletto to the far right of screen trying to go all the way around the outside. Here comes the Brazilian. He's through into second. Can he take the race lead? He's gone off the circuit. Portoletto up into second place. Looks like we're all through cleanly. There goes Tim Tramnitz trying to go to the outside. Bortoletto now trying to go to the outside of Hadri and David. David still leading the way as they come through turn number two and now fire their way down through turn three and make the climb up towards turn number four. There we saw Victor Bernier side by side with someone, one of the MP cars up in the top of the picture. That looks like Francesco Braschi uh, has had it off, sadly. But it's David who leads from Bortoletto. Mini is in third. Belinsky there going around the outside of uh, Esteban. Masson to take a place. Now it looks like a change of 12th place. So the Polish driver trying to get towards the top 10 immediately as they come through the chicane for the first time. Joshua Dirksen and Victor Bernier cut across the chicane. They're going to have to give those places back if they made any. Getting to the end of the second sector, one of the RPM cars briefly off there. I think that was Pietro Delicuanti. Currently in a RPM sandwich is Maceo Capietto as they make their way down towards turn number 12 now. 28 and a half on the clock there. You can see Beganovic trying to come down the inside of Esteban Masson in the red and white. Now coming up towards us, Beganovic trying to go all the way around the outside of Masson in the blue. Cannot oh, contact. The championship leader is off. Championship leader goes off there. Might have to come into the pit lane if he's got damage. Beganovic rejoining now. But that's an absolute disaster. That would have put uh, Beganovic up into 13th place potentially as we come across the start finish line. Hadrian David leads. Then it is Bortoletto. Then Mini. Then in fourth place is Travis. Bortoletto. There comes a big, big move there from Josh Dubek down the inside. That looks like of Owen Tangavelu. And I think he's pulled it off. Josh Dubek is up a position. Push to pass is now activated and he might have used some there Josh Dubek to make that move but Tangavelu fights back and retakes that place behind him is Kaz Havakor he's made a good start he's up to 11th place so far Viganovic dropped down to 22nd place at the end of the first lap after that contact with Masson 
takes the racing line, but Paul Aron sends it down on the inside of Fornaroli. Can't quite get through. Tangavelu trying to do the switchback. Capietto in the all black there, in the orange and green. That is Tangavelu. He's going to be to the left of our picture, coming down towards turn number two. Tangavelu trying to go all the way around the outside. Capietto says no, you don't. Shows him to the exit curb. Good driving from the Frenchman there, and he holds on to eighth place. Dufek now brought into play as we come up towards turn four in the orange and black. Here comes Dufek. He's not going to go around the outside there. Surely he gave it a go, but I don't think it came off. No, Dufek tucks back in. Brilliant racing as expected in the Formula Regional European Championship by Alpine. All the fans we have here for the drivers, and there is a lot of them here this weekend cheering on. The drivers will be absolutely loving this one. Masson and selling the dummy there, Josh Dufek down the inside of Owen Tangavelu. Can he get the car stopped in time? Yes, Josh Dufek is through. Well, it's taken him a long time to do it, but Josh Dufek is now past Owen Tangavelu. That is a change for ninth place. Kaz Habakur will be next. Tangavelu could be dropping out of the points here if he's not careful. Brenda Belinsky could be dropping down to 13th if he's not careful. Here we can see Dudu Barrichello and Noel Leon, the two teammates, fighting away with each other. And for 20th place, a little bit further down, Dino Beganovic just up the road from them, trying to chase down Mary Boyer. Not much in it at all. Maceo Capietto thinks he's got out of gap on the inside there. Josh Dufek sold the dummy to him, went down the inside. Brilliant driving from Josh Dufek there. Maceo Capietto did not know what was going on behind him at all. He thought he had that one covered. That was an absolutely fantastic move. Right, have the course got one down, and you can see the gap he's pulled from Tangavelu already, who's really, really struggling. Dirksen, what a move that is down the inside. Uh, Belinsky, almost contact between them there. Belinsky runs off. They're going to be side by side through 11 there. Dirksen threw one down the inside there. Absolutely brilliant driving from the driver from Paraguay and great stuff from Belinsky to give him the room as well. Great racing between the two rookies and in the background, Montoya all the way around the outside of Masson. Are we going to see a change there? Montoya's now going to have the inside. In the red and white there, this will be a change for 14th place and Montoya is through. Brilliant stuff from Montoya. Round the outside he goes now to complete that move. Here we see uh, a replay on the exit of the corner. And there was a spin for Roman Polinski, sadly. Contact it might have been with Joshua Dirksen. We didn't quite see what happened, so we can say no further than that. All we can say is a spin for Roman Belinsky. So it's uh, sadly been a, a weekend of two halves for him. Belinsky uh, seems to be calling it a day. I wonder if he's picked up some damage to that car. Oh dear, Joshua Dirksen's off. Now, could we see a safety car late in this race? We've got a yellow flag at turn 11, which is the fast right-hander before they drop downhill. Yes, safety car is out. Paul Aron was literally, I think, might have even been on push to pass, about to make a move. Watch for the red and white Arden there. Oh, dear, contact coming out of the corner. It seemed the car ahead may have slowed up slightly. And Joshua Dirksen had nowhere to go. That was Cass Havercourt ahead of him as well. Josh Dirksen just went straight into the back of Havacor, who I think has picked up damage. He's dropped down to 13th place. We're going to get a proper sprint to the flag here. This is going to take a few minutes, I'm sure, to clear up. Lights go out on the safety car, so we might have to do that post-race. Hadrian David is going to be a leader from Gabriel Bortoletto. Gabrielli Mini next along. Tim Tramnitz in fourth is the lead rookie. Currently, he'd be on the podium with the top three. Watch out for Josh Dufek in seventh place. Watch out for Paul Aron in sixth place. Here we go then, up towards the final corner. Gabrielli Mini will want to get past Gabriel Bortoletto quickly. However, Gabriel Bortoletto has a chance at taking his first ever win in this championship. Up towards the start finish line in the all black, Maceo Capietto has got a brilliant start. They can use push to pass at the start finish line. Sebastian Montoya is side by side with Tangavelu as they come up towards turn number one in the red and white. You'll see Montoya going around the outside of Tangavelu and he's through. Montoya is into the points then. 
great driving there from the Colombian, and he is up into 10th place. That's one point, and he's not done there yet. He's trying to get another one now, trying to go around the outside of Capietto. Can't quite get through there. They drop downhill once more. There is Kaz Havicourt. Looks like he's not got damage, not got enough damage to uh, have to retire from this race. Still able to continue. Let's hope that's the case for the remaining one minute and 15 seconds. Up towards the start finish line we go. Gabrielli Mini lining a move up on Gabriel Portoletto. We could be side by side for second. To the outside goes Gabrielli Mini. Paul Aron to the outside of Leonardo Fornaroli. Oh no, contact. Deligoanti, that might have been down the inside of the pair of them. And Deligoanti is out of this race. Yellow flags are out. Mini goes round the outside of Gabriel Portoletto. Not able to get through, or is he? He's found a gap on the inside. Through at turn three. Gabrielli Mini takes second place away from Gabriel Bortoletto. Safety car is out. The race is going to end under safety car. Suspension damage to Deligoanti. What a shame for him. He was on to take more points for the RPM team. Let's find out what happened. The pace just slowed up and Deligoanti had nowhere to go and he's clattered straight into the side of Aaron. That a really unfortunate incident, to be honest, because Deligoanti was going in at a pretty normal race speed. Well, the race will finish behind the safety car, of course, and it looks like it's going to be Hadrian David who's going to take his second win of the season. Well, around the final corner, Hadrian David, he took the win back at Monaco a few months ago, a win that will stay close to him for the rest of his career. But across the line, it's going to be the second win of the season for Hadrian David and his fourth of his Freco career. The Frenchman wins, Gabriele Mini, another podium for the Italian, and that his 12th in his Freca career. And Gabriel Portoletto comes across the line to take his third podium. Yes, uh, very, 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 very happy uh, with the race and with today. Uh, yeah, just everything was perfect. The quality was very strong. The start uh, was very strong as well. And yeah, then I managed uh, the gap with Gabriel. He was flying at the beginning and uh, it was hard to keep him behind. But yeah, at one point I made the gap and then I was just managing and not doing any mistakes. So yes, uh, air race was very strong today and I think uh, two cars on the podium is uh, almost perfect. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, for sure it's really good uh, to be on the podium once again. The start was not uh, great, it was a uh, good one. Uh, good enough uh, to try and attack uh, Adven, but uh, yeah, Gabriel was on the left, so I couldn't do crazy stuff. And yeah, I tried to keep my, my line, of course I got a bit blocked um, by Adven and uh, got overtaken. Then it was all about, uh, you know, not doing mistakes during the race. Uh, our races were, uh, both of them, we were really quick, especially in the first laps, uh, but then I started to catch um, towards the end. Then after the safety car, uh, yeah, as you said, uh, we had a bit uh, less uh, pick up on the tires, so that helped me quite a lot. And uh, yeah, I could, uh, using the push to pass, I could uh, try to attack Gabriel. Managed to overtake, it was quite tight, but uh, good enough. So yeah, I'm really happy with this P2. Yeah, I'm quite happy to be back here on the podium. Uh, well, yesterday we had an issue and avoid us to maybe get a podium on yesterday race and for sure it was quite a lot of points that we lose there but yes uh, today I made a mega start I tried to I overtook Cabri and I tried to overtake uh, Hadrian as well unfortunately I couldn't overtake him in the first corner I got pushed a bit uh, out of the track but yeah it's racing you know and uh, and then I keep the pace. I was quite fast at the beginning and mid race, but at the end I couldn't uh, hold Gabri for so long. Safety car like helped me a bit, but at the same time I got too much pickup on my tire. And then when I restart, uh, I had no more tires because of the pickups, and Gabri had cleaned it better than me, and he managed to overtook me, to overtake me. But yes, uh, good to be back on podium, score some points for the championship, and I cannot wait to go to Spa, one of my favorite tracks, to see how we go. Mm -hmm.